Good night everyone and welcome back to the Nocturnal Corner with Bat. And in today's episode we are going to be doing a little bit of some gameplay of Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Getting our nice little dub after not playing this game for a while. And that's, and I am emphasizing for a while. Like I don't remember the last time I played this game. So if you actually watch me play in this beginning part you're going to see me like pausing and like doing things pretty slow and some like you know you know i'm gonna be like kind of a snail's pace a little bit at the start because i'm just trying to remember the layout of the buttons and everything even i know it says it off to the side but you're just gonna like see me going through the pause menu and everything because I, I didn't really fully remember how to play it's been so damn long but even though i haven't played in so long you're gonna see this is going to be a pretty good dub in this video, guys. Now, if you did read the title of this video, I am going to be explaining where I've been and where exactly I want to go from here. So, if you're... Uh, well, let's start with where, I, where I've been, alright? So, I did kind of lose my room where I used to be, you know, really doing everything. Uh, I'm no longer in that living space, and I didn't really have internet for a while. And when I was in that living space... uh these people didn't do anything wrong they were just trying to like watch out for my health when i was watch when i was uh creating these videos and whatnot and it kind of killed the flow for me and like that loop i was in to where i was like doing three to two videos every week it they because they kept stopping me it it really destroyed the momentum that i was in and as a result, it just kind of like like broke the cycle and it just made it a little bit harder for me to upload. And then after losing that room and not having really in good internet or anything, because if you watched my videos in the past, I talked about how I've been trying to upload certain videos. But whatever fucking reason, PlayStation would just like completely stop. Like, it, I would have to put it in rest mode, I would have to make sure nothing is on, I'd have to have everything in a specific way, because if you didn't do it correctly, for whatever fucking reason, it would just, just delete the fucking video and just say error has occurred, and it wouldn't post it, and it, that could last from like, one, two, or even three days, so just imagine that, and then imagine having like, no internet, and now you're separated from the internet, and then, now I'm no longer in that room, and now I'm in a pretty small camper right now, with no functioning water, so if I want to have to take a dump or whatever, I have to literally leave here, and go all the way to my grandparents' house, just so I can use the bathroom, alright, and and also, if you didn't know, my birthday was actually March 6th, so, you know, happy birthday to me, even though it's a little late now. I actually wanted to make a video on my birthday, but I was still kind of in my, like, my funk, and I didn't really, I, I don't know, I was, I was struggling to find the, the motivation to actually get in there and do it. So it's been mainly me just being quiet and being alone here in the camper, especially since I didn't have any, like, friends or anyone to really, like, talk to at the time to really do anything. And honestly, a lot of my progress and everything that I was making was because I was in that momentum with YouTube, and I was actually using you guys to actually help me get through everything. And, you know, losing that source, I kind of... It, it kind of threw me in a bit of a funk. So after losing that, losing my momentum, and then here, here's another thing. March 5th, you know, the day before my birthday, I actually got fired from my main job, my delivery job, the one that actually gave me the income that I was using to actually <laughs> survive. And now that that's gone, I have my second job, which is at AutoZone, and AutoZone really hates giving you, what is it, raises? and whatnot like if you even spend like a year there you'll get like 10 cents or whatever the hell and it's just ridiculous the only reason that they're getting a little bit better is because of the florida law where they're forcing them to put like a dollar every year up to like 15 eventually so it's still not the best right now and i probably should have been looking for more hours after i got fired on you know the day before my birthday which uh, it still really sucks oh man but it, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if you're wondering what happened there, uh, basically a semi-truck pulled off into the grass on the right lane in Orange Park. There's like a like a three lanes, so you know you got the left, middle, and the right one. And we were on the right lane. He pulled off, but he didn't fully properly take his trailer off of the road. So the back, like the very far back of his long trailer, the corner on the left side was still like almost like in the middle of the road. And even though I did slow down, like I got went from 
you know, 50, because I usually just do 5 over the speed limit, nothing more. I try to, you know, abide by the laws, especially if I'm working. And I went down to 25. I was following in tail with the car in front of me, you know. I was just making sure we moved over into the middle lane so that way we could properly get past this trailer. And I was even checking my driver's side mirror to make sure that the lane was clear before following the guy in front of me. And even though I thought I was doing everything perfect, I still somehow managed to tap the very corner of the passenger side mirror so uh, this is a modified f-250 that has like a cooler heater thing in the back so the the mirrors on the side are extended for this larger vehicle so you can actually see both sides and since it hit that very corner it left like a, a crack in it and the glass popped out so other than other damage it didn't break the passenger side like window it didn't leave a dent or anything in the door or anything like that there was no like you know damage that couldn't be repaired or anything like that but the company told me that this is gonna apparently cost like uh, like over a thousand dollars to fix and all this other stuff even with insurance so they said even after two years of working with them and that I was apparently one of their, I think it was top, yeah, I, I managed to get to their top three drivers. They still let me go after, you know, two years for breaking a mirror. And <laughs> everyone I talk to tells me that's some bullshit. <laughs> but I, I guess it is what it is, I suppose. But after that, uh, that didn't help with my funk and, you know, constantly being alone here in Florida living in a place where it's just the middle of bunfuck nowhere in the woods to where even the internet and everything sucks it's just like eh, it's whatever but you know I, people just tell me that you know some people are in worse situations than you be thankful you have a camper and whatnot and it's like yeah i guess but you know eating only once a day <laughs> at that uh kind of sucks you know what i'm saying <laughs> not having any water uh kind of sucks <laughs> uh oh man but i guess it is what it is i suppose but, you know, I managed to uh, get a better internet. We had AT&T that it was fucking terrible out here. But uh, Verizon recently has, like, their little white boxes that look like miniature versions of the Xbox Xs or whatever the hell they're called now. And I have that, so the internet is a bit better. But every now and then, if you play a more high-end game, it will tend to lag. And there is times where the lag is so bad that I sometimes can't even play Crossout. Which is damn shame, and I don't know if you saw that. I, I just shot my teammate in the back of the fucking head. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, that reminds me of, like, you know, when we used to play Rainbow Six Siege, and every time you tried to shoot that damn camera that was outside, your teammate would always run in front of you. Just like, just one shot! And that one shot always hit your teammate in the head. And then there would be... Then their buddy would go and kill you because he thought you did it on purpose. <laughs> I guess they never watched the cams. But, um... So there, there's been a, a few things. It, it's been more than just that and whatnot, but I mean, I'm sure it's just a bunch of BS and whatnot. I'm just like trying to explain myself that I've been just absent, and you know maybe it's just my fault for being in that state of mind and whatnot. So, but here I am again. You know I just posted that video yesterday, and I did say that I would explain where I've been, and I thought I would also add in uh, where I'd like to go from here. So, another thing that I've been doing, and what I've been doing to break out of this funk, is I kind of just started going into my passions. I started thinking, like, what exactly do I want to do, and should I really just push being a pilot? Should I, you know, try to find another job and just hope that it pays better? Like, what should I really just do with myself? And honestly, I just started looking into my passions again, and I was thinking I like art. I like designing. Uh, one of the things I did was in, like, Future Business Leaders of America in high school, and I used to really enjoy just doing, like, the, the signing courses, getting Photoshop, Adobe, and whatnot certified, and that was pretty neat, in my opinion, and I decided to take that, and I remembered some of the other passions that I had, where, if you remember, I used to talk about how I wanted to be a theme park YouTuber, where I wanted to be, like, you know, Rick's Flick, I hope I said that right, or, like, the Pog 2, you know, people like them where they actually go to the parks and they get to talk about the parks and everything and I actually did like a, a whole bunch of research into those things where family and you know people like co-workers and even people that I've like talked to online where if we like get into like a 
theme park discussion they'll usually tell me that i sound like a cyclopedia of theme parks because of all the information that i would tell them if they ever like wanted to come down to florida and do like a disney trip or you know go to machine gun america helicopter tours i used to tell them about the discounts you could get with military or if they are have like a parent or somebody in florida the floridian discounts and whatnot and exactly what are the best times of the year that you could come down to florida to get away from the rain to get to get away from the kids when they're at school, to always avoid holidays and always avoid summer, especially summer, you know, when that shit is hot, the rain is unpredictable, kids are out, you know, they jack up their prices as a result because everybody wants to take a vacation there. So it's, it's usually never worth going on a vacation in summer if you want to do parks and stuff because I, I don't know about you, uh, I don't want to wait three hours in line to ride a single roller coaster. All right. Um, but I took that as well, and I just figured, why not design a water park? You know, um, I am looking into actually designing the first large-scale water park for North Florida, where I want to put North Florida on the map and actually make them into a tourist attraction. So, my progress has been, you know, I started thinking about it. I got some sketchbooks, I got a journal, I started writing down some ideas, I I basically wrote down and sketched out like all of the current water parks like Volcano Bay, uh, Typhoon Lagoon, um, Blizzard Beach, Aquatica, so on, where we have all these different locations that are usually only in South Florida, and North Florida doesn't really have anything like that. Uh, we used to have like a small scale water park, which we, um, it's like a, I think it was like around the like 103rd or somewhere around there, it was uh, for Adventure Landing. And now after Adventure Landing has basically closed up shop, we lost we, we lost something that was really a good hangout spot for like families down here. Even the bowling alleys, like we used to go to Bowl America and whatnot, or even like Phoenix Lanes and stuff, all of those have closed up shop. Um, like what else is there? Like Chuck E. Cheese is damn near empty. You never hear anybody talk about Dave & Buster's. Uh, I think we have like Top Golf, and from there, all there really is is like every once a year there'll be a fair, like here in Green Cove, and I some they sometimes have it in Jacksonville. I don't know if that one's yearly because I I usually never hear about it unless the fucking advertisement is absolute shit unless you're in a certain area, so you never really hear about that one, and it's just just kind of lame, you know what I'm saying? Like I I don't really care for bars. I think playing pool and whatnot is cool. Like, you know, I'm cool at pool, and, you know, you got darts. You know, they don't they don't really have, like, an arcade in bars usually or anything. Um, there is, like, two really, really small-scale um, arcades that I can think of that are down here. And I think one is, like, Level Up, and the other one I, like, Split. Cause, and I think it's called Split because they have, like, an arcade and, a, like, a small, like, it's not even a full-scale bowling alley, but, like, a, a smaller-scale one, like, more tailored to kids and whatnot. And... Really, the uh, the arcades are they're still kind of small. It's like if you go there once or twice, you probably have done everything. Especially since like the other half of the room in the arcade area is literally like just pinball machines, which I have nothing against pinball machines. And if you see right here, I didn't shoot at this dude because I thought my teammate killed him. So I was just like, oh, he's dead. And then I started looking back. I'm like, oh shit, he didn't die. <laughs> my fucking dumbass. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, damn it, that could have been a second kill. But, it's what it is. Um, so really, in my opinion, it is not much exciting down here. Like, you know, CC's Pizza is lost in quality. We just mainly have a bunch of fast food restaurants. There's no real restaurant down here that you would really think about desiring to go. Maybe if you... I think, like, the best is, like, you know, a Longhorn. Uh, you know, we have, like, fast food slash restaurant things like Chili's and Fridays. You know, those are nice every now and then they're not everywhere i think there's like one in orange park and uh, mm -hmm. uh fleming island yeah yeah i think no we got like a like a ruby tuesdays in fleming island and i think a chili's so you know it's, it's not everywhere you know what i'm saying so it's like I, I don't know it's not there's nothing like even the malls like we do have the orange park mall still here but it it's it's kind of a small mall to be honest, like, the outlets that you would find in Orlando are so much bigger and have, like, better variety of things and, like, 
like even like attractions down there. You know what I'm saying? We don't we don't really have that up here. We do have up here is a bunch of churches. Uh, I mean, I guess if you like going to church, you got you got a huge ass selection. You got that. <laughs> um, but you know, after looking into that, and then I also started talking to more people about like what do they want to do and if they would like the idea of a water park and a lot of people have been saying that they really enjoyed the idea i started to watch videos on business and i started watching documentaries on disney and universal and how they came up to be and then from there i started writing all that notes down and then i started you know like i said i sketched out the water parks i started writing down everything that they had and where their locations are and then i started diving into like the different types of water slides the different types of you know water rides and what how it is more family oriented because originally i was thinking what if i did a theme park you know and i just thought i would design something that'd be pretty cool with a theme park and then i wanted to also combine this passion with you know the military because i always loved the military and one of the things that really brought me to this idea is two other things actually and it's actually from you guys where some of you left comments like man i hope you like you make it and you go big and everything you deserve it and all that and you know i kind of took that as at first like damn man maybe maybe i am meant for you too but i kind of took that in another way like maybe i could go big in another way and then another thing is my gunnery sergeant or i, I believe she got promoted but she did retire um, I'm not sure. Not sure which rank she was now, because she went through an E8. I think she went to Master Sergeant too. I don't think she did First Sergeant, if I remember correctly. She went. Uh, yeah, I do think she went to Master Sergeant. So congratulations to her on her promotion. Yeah, uh, if you ever see this Gunnery Sergeant Mosley, or sorry, my apologies, Master Sergeant Mosley. Uh, we had. I do miss y'all. I miss y'all, man. I miss the Marine Corps, man. I, I miss Japan. Japan was excellent. You know, if you've never been to Okinawa, it's such a nice place. The people are really nice. You know, it's <sighs> probably one of the best times of my life, being in the Marines in Japan. And uh, that's a, a memory that I that I wish I could share more with more people, because that is something that a lot of people won't be able to experience in their lifetime. And I guess in a way I am fortunate about that, but. One of the things she told me before I went out is that I could, that I will always be a Marine despite how I feel and how, because of the way I went out, uh, I always like never felt like I was really a Marine and I just never felt like I deserved to call myself a Marine because of it and it, I didn't do anything bad. They always like used to tell me I was one of the hardest workers. I've actually had, so, uh, not sergeants, but um, officers stop me like when I'm walking to the clinic to just tell me that they've heard about me and that they've heard a lot of really good things about me and that I should be proud of the progress and everything that I've made and it, it's just really kind of well um, I just want to make this park not just for money I'm. If I have to stay in this piece of shit camper, that's that's fine. You know what I'm saying. Um, but I I want to I want to make more progress. I uh, I went to a national military appreciation event that we had in the fairgrounds, and I got in contact with the commissioner. I got in contact with multiple uh, resources for veteran businesses and so on that even gave me information about businesses that or you know organizations that also help with starting businesses and whatnot. And they all gave me a lot of good information to follow, and I am now in contact with the commissioners of the county, which is, you know, we don't have a mayor out here, so this is going to be the highest that we do have. And they all really seem to like the idea of starting a water park that is not just for my benefit, but also to eventually expand onto that idea and make something that will actually support veterans and first responders. We could take the success that is proven from these areas and put them here to better not only, you know, not only the veterans and first responders, but the community itself. Because if you think about it, a water park is just, it's perfect. It's perfect. And the reason I say that it's perfect is because it's so much cheaper than a theme park. Where if you think about roller coasters and these huge designer lands, like, you know, the Harry Potter area and the, you know, the 
the Star Wars area and whatnot, which were like a billions of dollars and whatnot, we could start a water park for way less than that. Just fifty million dollars, and that—that's a lot, especially for me. You know, I'm saying this as some broke dude who, <laughs> who's never actually even seen ten thousand dollars in my life. But think of that compared to a regular uh, theme park, where it's going to be hundreds to billions of dollars to produce and harder to maintenance and everything. A water park will be a great start, a fantastic start, and we could do something with that that'll still make it military themed and eventually it'd be able to expand on that. And what I really love about water parks is that they are more family oriented and for a general, like a a better general di uh, damn I forgot how to say it, uh, demographic. And the reason I say that is because if you really think about it, they have passive attractions and they have active attractions. Where the active is going to be like the slides, you know, waiting in line. You're going to have like the different types of tube slides, the, r the racing slides, you know. Like I'm, I'm saying the names wrong. Uh, I, I, I actually have like all of these rides and things, but I'm just kind of like just talking. Well, we could we could do all of this and have all of these different attractions that'll be for everyone. It'll basically bring families together. Because if you think about it, with all the bullshit that's happening in the United States, the idea of fun is colorblind. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what color you are or what age you are. A water park will have something for you. If you want to spend time with your grandma, take a tour on the Lazy River. If you want to know that if that's too exciting for her, you got the cabanas. You could relax, lay down, have a drink. If you want to do stuff with your kids, there's the play areas. There's the different types of water slides that'll be for any type of person, even thrill seekers, if so be. This, and then putting an attraction down here, it, it wouldn't just put North Florida on the map with the rest of the tourist state. It'll bring more jobs out here. Because think about it. When you have such a large structure, you are benefiting so many people when it comes to jobs and opportunities. Because the theme park has so much to offer. From architects, artists, to retail, different management positions, or even so be it, you know, you have mechanics, engineers. Hell, there's always a clinic by. So you could be a nurse and gain some experience from this park. And I've already gotten contact with IPA and WWA. And I am planning on going to the Expos in November in Orlando and hopefully the one in Las Vegas. It's going to be a challenge to try to get to the one in Las Vegas for the WWA so I could take their 40 plus classes and find more suppliers, manufacturers and even possible investors in the future. But hopefully we can make this an achievement. If if I have to stay out here, that's fine. I I don't really care to be rich. I am I, I'm used to being you know in the poorer side of things, and it is a struggle and whatnot. But if I'm gonna go out, I don't really have friends or a whole lot of family or anything to, you know, where, where's the money going to go? Back to the government? Is it, is it just going to go in the dirt? You know what I'm saying? I want to build a legacy that'll be about being a hero. The whole reason why I joined the Marine Corps in the first place. I want to do something for my country. I want to do something for my countrymen. I want to do something for the Marine Corps. And not just them, but all the other veterans and first responders that we have in this place. So I hope one day I can show my success and we can build the passage of heroes. If I die any time, I want this to be my legacy. That there is going to be something in America that is going to benefit my community, my city, my family, and my country. Please never forget to uh, to thank them for their service. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this, I hope you have a great night, and I will see you in the next one.